Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an infinite equation. We've done these infinite expressions before. We kind of had a number on one side and the uh, variables on the other side, but this time we have variables on both sides. And both of these are infinite expressions, one of them being a nested radical, the other one being kind of like a continued fraction with the same variable x. Obviously, these expressions will only have a meaning if these uh, the limit uh, is finite or the expression converges. Anyways, I'm going to skip those details and dive right into the solution. So here's what I would like to do. I'm going to set both of these equal to the same thing, which is y. And in this case, I want x to be positive to avoid some of the complications. You know, I want x to be positive. So now, let's start with the first one. Let's set this equal to y. We've done these expressions before. Again, there's a shortcut for this. By the way, that's a plus sign. And uh, I can also talk about the shortcut uh, if you want. But anyway, so here uh, I want to solve for x. So let's go ahead and... Or I want to solve for y, I should probably say that. Anyways, let's square both sides. And we're going to get rid of the outermost radical. And we're going to get this equal to y squared. But notice that... This expression is the same as the original one, which is y. So from here, we get something real nice, like infinite turns into finite. Of course, that lo as long as it's convergent, right? And here, I would like to solve for y. So let's go ahead and write it as a quadratic equation. This is going to be fun. And from here, we can solve for y using the quadratic formula. Normally, I would label the roots y1 and y2, but this time, I'm not going to do it because you'll see in a little bit. So y equals negative b, which is 1, plus, minus, but I'm going to write them separately, plus uh, negative b plus minus the square root. What was the formula? Okay, b squared minus 4ac. Okay, I just forgot the quadratic formula. b squared is 1, minus 4ac, minus, minus, it's going to be a plus 4x. Awesome. This is one of the roots, and the other root of this quadratic, again, I'm not using the subscripts here, so it's going to have the minus sign in between, right? The problem is, uh, if x is positive, uh, this is not going to be good because it's going to be uh, negative. So we're going to discard that solution. We're only going to go with this one. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. And we're going to be doing something very similar. So let's go ahead and do it right here so you guys can compare. We have this expression right here. And I can basically, since I call the whole thing y, this is the same thing. So that's also y, right? You see that hopefully. So now I have the following equation, x plus x over y equals y. And guess what? This bring, brings us a quadratic equation, another quadratic. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides or everything by y. We get yx plus x equals y squared. And when, we, when you bring the uh, everything on the same side, you get y squared minus xy minus x equals 0. And now notice that this is a quadratic equation in y and I can solve it using the quadratic formula again. So let me go ahead and cut this. Bring it over here. Uh -oh. Also cut something else, but anyways. And solve uh, this equation right here. All right, cool. To solve this equation, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So it's going to be y equals negative b plus uh, square root of b squared, which is x squared, plus uh, negative uh, b squared minus 4ac, but that's going to turn into plus 4x, divide by 2. And the other solution is x minus square root of x squared plus 4x, divided by 2. But I don't want this because this is not good, it's negative, so on and so forth. Problematic. So this is the y value I will be using. But notice that we're talking about the same y here. So they're equal. Let's go ahead and set them equal to each other. And remember, our goal was to solve for x, even though I didn't, I didn't say that. Hopefully, that uh, you already knew it. Because y is a variable that we invented. We just introduced it. It's not in the original problem, so we're solving for x, which is the only variable. So what should I do? Set the y's equal to each other. Let's do it. And I, I don't really favor any sides, but let's just go ahead and use this first. And then this is equal to the other one. Awesome. So now from, from here, we're going to solve for x. Radicals, we're going to simplify this. So let's go ahead and get rid of the 2's first. 
And then what can I do with this equation? Let me rewrite it. x plus the square root of x squared plus 4x equals 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4x. So we're going to go ahead and solve this equation. And we'll talk about the meaning of the roots. And at the end, we're going to be looking at a graph, which is actually mm, fairly important. Okay. How can I solve this equation? This is radical. One method is you can square both sides. Uh, or you can put the radicals on the same side and then square both sides. I'm going to do the second. So let's go ahead and bring this other radical here and subtract x from both sides. Okay, I'm going to square both sides, right? Needless to say. And when I do, I'll get rid of all the radicals except for one because it'll be introduced another one. But that's okay. We'll take care of it. Uh, we'll get rid of the first radical and then let's do the second radical and then minus 2ab let's write it last two times this times that I know that kind of looks a little confusing but don't worry about it on the right hand side we're gonna get something uh, real nice okay and that's gonna be the following it's gonna be 1 minus 2x plus x squared What's really nice about it is that one cancels out and x squared cancels out. Awesome. And then this gives us something super duper nice. Let's go ahead and put all the x's. Excuse me. <clears throat> Let's put all the x's on the same side. So it's going to be 4x plus 4x plus 2x. That is 10x. And let's put everything else, all the radicals on the right hand side. You see, it's going to simplify a great deal. And we get the following. Awesome. We can definitely divide both sides by 2. And I would like to write the radicals on the left-hand side. Doesn't matter, no big deal. It's just OCD. Okay. So this is what I get. And how can I solve this equation? Obviously, if you said square both sides, you got it right. So let's go ahead and do it. And obviously, squaring both sides over and over may introduce extraneous roots, which means um, the solutions, some of the solutions you find are not going to work in the original one. Anyways, let's square this, and that's going to give me, uh, that's a product, so it should be clear, right? No radicals left after this, and the right-hand side is going to be 25x squared, so it's not super bad. Let's go ahead and distribute it, x squared plus 4x cubed plus 4x plus 16x squared equals... 25x squared. Now I have x cubed, so let's go ahead and put that first, right? And then bring the 25x squared over here, but I have x squared plus 16x squared. That's going to be 17 minus 25. That's going to be a negative 8x squared. And then plus 4x equals 0. Guess what? This is factorable. We can take out 4x, and the rest is going to be a piece of cake. Yay! So it's going to be 2x plus 1 equals 0. And this is awesome because you get x equals 0 and x minus 1 squared equals 0 which means x equals 1. So we got two candidates. I say candidates because these solutions may not work. So we have to check with the original equation. How do we check? What do I mean by original? Not the infinite radical but the equations that we came up with, right? This, this one. This is our, well, pretty much the original. So I got 0, right? If I plug in 0, uh, it's not going to give me something nice, right? Because 0 obviously does not equal 1. Because, well, it's not a 1, it's a 2. Never mind. I get a 0 from here and I get a 2 from here. So they're not equal for sure. But if I plug in x equals 1, then I get an equality. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and cut this, since we don't need it over there anymore. And bring it over here. All right. Let's bring it over here so we can kind of look at it. Here we go. So x equals 0 did not work because that gave me 0 equals 2. That's not good. Let's go ahead and plug in x equals 1. We get 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4, which is 5. On the left-hand side and the right-hand side gives us 1 plus square root of 5. Yay! That's awesome. Very cool. So x equals 1 is the only solution which is valid. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now and see, try to understand what's going on here. Well, here's the thing. 
you don't uh, see the whole picture here uh, because I did not graph the minus ones. But if you do, you're going to get there sort of like a reflection. And the problem with that is, uh, you know, they're not going to be nice for the negative x values. So that's going to be a little problematic. But it, as you can see here in this graph, uh, we have a really nice solution at x equals 1 and the y value. We don't care about the y value. So x equals 1 is going to be the only solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.